In today's video, I want to talk about the AI in Blade Runner 2049. And as someone who works in tech and in the field of artificial intelligence, just sort of talk about how close we might be in reality to having some of these AI systems. I'll end with talking about replicants and talk about how close we really are to having robots that look and act like humans. So if that's why you clicked on this video, I'll put a timestamp on the screen and you can skip ahead. But first let's talk about spinners, which are flying cars in the movie. These cars can drive on the ground, but they can also take off vertically, hover, cruise, and use jet propulsion. There are definitely a bunch of companies, mostly startups, that make a similar product. Many are called air taxis, and they're small aircrafts that first off look more like little planes or helicopters than they look like cars, but these things can do the vertical takeoffs and landings, but there's nothing really out there right now that's designed to be a hybrid between a car and an aircraft, and there's definitely nothing anywhere near as advanced as a spinner. What's interesting about flying cars though, is we may be more limited by regulations and policies than we are by technology itself. If flying cars end up becoming a consumer product and we have networks of them in the airspace, we need to make sure everything is properly coordinated. If you think about commercial planes, they're monitored by air traffic controllers sitting in a tower. They're monitored by people. And if we want to have flying vehicles, we basically need to automate air traffic management, which won't be easy to do. On top of that, there's really no point to having flying cars unless they are safer and better than other modes of transportation out there. And safety is going to be a huge factor in being able to push this flying car agenda forward. Oh, and we need the infrastructure to support it all. We need modified parking garages, runways if they're necessary, there's just a lot that would still need to happen to even support this technology as companies continue to develop it. Next, I want to talk about this drone that Kay had as a detachable part of his car that he could also command verbally and with hand gestures. We actually already have a version of this kind of technology. Granted, these drones don't detach from your car and they're limited in capability, but voice and gesture controlled drones are already on the market. DJI makes drones that you can pilot using gestures as well as drones that you can program yourself. You can program the drones with Python and DJI provides the API so anyone can program the drones to recognize different hand gestures and know when to take off, navigate forward, do flips, live stream video, and land. Amazon also has a patent to make drones that are small enough to fit in our pockets or purses. And in their patent, they give some example use cases. So we have an idea of possible ways that we could use this kind of technology. They say that you could use these drones to locate vehicles in a parking lot or track a person. Like for instance, if a police officer is suddenly forced into a foot chase, they could instruct the drone to follow the person that they're pursuing. Theoretically, I think we could do a lot with this kind of technology, but legally, I think we can't just yet because these drones would need to fly in highly populated areas and there aren't really rules on what commercial drones can legally do. Next, I wanna talk about projectable or holographic people like Kay's girlfriend, Joy, in the movie. Bon appétit. I missed you, baby sweet. Right now, it is possible to make holograms of people with volumetric displays. You just record them from every angle and use that to build a 3D avatar that moves and can be viewed from any angle. But to have a fully AI-driven solution where the person can actually respond to you and interact with you and it's not pre-recorded, we basically need a souped up version of Siri and an AI hologram that knows how to move and emote like a human which we are very far away from being able to create. And finally, I'd like to talk about replicants, which are robots that look and act exactly like humans. In the movie, they use the phrase more human than human, but I think that's just a marketing slogan because you're either human or you're not. In Blade Runner, the only way to tell whether someone is a replicant or a human is to put them through a test that's designed to elicit certain emotions that 
replicants are not designed to have. Cells. Have you ever been in an institution? Cells. Cells. When you're not performing your duties, do they keep you in a little box? Cells. Cells. Interlinked. Interlinked. What's it like to hold the hand of someone you love? Interlinked. I think the most humanoid robots we currently have or could possibly create right now with the technology that we do have are very far away from replicants, both physically and intellectually. You can be the judge for yourself, but physically, there are some robots that are very human-like in appearance, but their motions and their facial expressions and the way they talk are still very unnatural and very robotic. Boston Dynamics, from what I've seen, has developed robots that have certain movements like jumping and running that are most similar to human movement, but they're not human-like in appearance at all. In terms of intellect, there are a lot of AI systems actually that are very close or even better than humans, but they're typically trained for very specific functions, like AI systems that can compose music or create recipes or act as a virtual assistant like Siri. There are also some AI systems that can recognize emotion and can even respond with empathy, which we can argue is what makes us human. AI systems can be developed to move and talk like humans, but if they can never emote or show empathy, then that's where there will always be a gap between humanoid robots and humans. Scientists have confirmed that there is an interdependency between emotional intelligence and general intelligence, and you can't really have human-like AI without personality and emotions. Empathy is patiently and sincerely seeing the world through the other person's eyes and is a particularly interesting component of the future of human-like robots. You might even argue that empathy can be learned, so we should be able to train artificially intelligent systems to be empathetic, but there are also ethical discussions to be had around empathetic AI because a lot of the times what people say and how people feel are actually two very different things. If we have AI that tries to decode facial expressions and tones of voice, then we'll likely have much more biased AI. And on top of that, AI right now isn't sophisticated enough to understand cultural differences in expression. So for instance, if a smile in one country means something different than a smile in another country, AI systems could be very confused and actually make very poor decisions. And lastly, and this may be a spoiler, so if you have not seen the movie, feel free to stop watching right here. I am not even going to touch on the topic of humanoid robots procreating. There are just so many natural, biological, and chemical processes that go into creating new life that I have no idea about, so I can't even fathom how this would be possible. Having two robots reproducing is so far-fetched and implausible and honestly, to me, quite terrifying. So that's where I'm going to end this video. If you've seen Blade Runner 2049, let me know if you agree or disagree with my assessments on the technology and AI systems that they use in the movie. And let me know, what is your favorite sci-fi movie? As always, if you liked this video, please hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Look at you. Quiet, now I have to sing. Oh boy.